The Milestone Series on Recovery. Tracking the milestones of the recovery world. Chronicling the industry leaders. Revealing their insights. Milestones, saving families, saving lives. Dr. Hawkins, you are the Chief of Psychiatry at the Lindner Centre of Hope. Talk to us about your talents and gifts. I am the Chief of Psychiatry at the Lindner Centre of Hope, as you mentioned. I also run the Transcranial Magnetic uh, Stimulation Service there at the Lindner Centre. And it's one of the new treatments that uh, we're offering in psychiatry. It's one of the latest advances in terms of treatment for depression. So I'm very excited to be able to offer that uh, treatment for our patients at the Lindner Center. Now tell me a little bit more about TMS and explain that for someone that doesn't understand the terminology. It is the uh, latest treatment that involves delivering magnetic energy to the brain in a safe and painless way. Can you make me smarter? Is that it? Well, it's not smarter. We're trying to help with mood. It actually helps with depression. And what the, the theory is, is that the area that we focus on called the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex is thought to be involved in the manifestation of depressive symptoms. When we place magnetic field and pulsate that magnetic field over that part of the brain, through the skull. Is there any incision required? No, there's okay. no incision required. It's just a placement of a essentially uh, a pad, so to speak, that's connected to uh, a machine that then delivers these very brief pulses. It feels like a rubber band being tapped on your forehead. And this lasts for about 45 minutes. And this delivers magnetic energy that goes through the skull into the brain and actually changes the electric activity of the brain in that area. And in that area, the activity has been shown through neuroimaging studies to actually increase. And with that increasing activity, we are able to help people improve their symptoms of depression. So what can you say, Dr. Hawkins, to someone to allay their fears like, oh my God, you're gonna put me on this table, you're gonna put a pad on my head and give me right. magnetic pulses? Well, one of the things we do is we can show them a videotape. And it's really, um, and, and we have people who've been through the treatment. We've treated 24 people at the Lindner Center. So this is very new. This is very new. Recently, FDA approved in 2009 for the treatment of depression. Um, and it offers an alternative for patients who have felt really frustrated with the use of medications. They've combined medications with psychotherapy and have had less than uh, the kind of results that they were hoping for. What's the success rate? The success rate is, is very remarkable. Um, at our center, we've been uh, tracking people using rating scales before and after the end of treatment, and we're showing about a 70% response rate. Even more impressive has been that we've approached 40% remission rate, which doesn't sound tremendous, but when you look at what options we have in psychiatry and the kind of rates that you see for remission, typically when you give someone another medication trial after they've tried two or three, you're looking at about 10 to 15% chance of remission. Those same folks, when we treat them with TMS, about a 40% chance to remission, which means essentially their symptoms are almost completely gone. So the Lindner Center of Hope also is connected to the Network of Hope. How does that fit in with the entire industry? The, uh, the Network of Hope is uh, really just a, a critical uh, component of really making sure people have access to the best care available. As Dr. Keck has mentioned, um, not every place can do everything for everybody. And so it's real critical that we network together to make sure patients and families have the best opportunity to receive the best treatment possible. I also think a network increases the strength of people that have a common mission, and that is to help patients and families with mental illness and substance abuse uh, disorders. Um, there's a huge stigma, uh, and people's uh, ambivalence about seeking treatment really rests upon their full understanding of, of what is going on with them, that it's not a, a character flaw or a weakness in will, that these are disorders that are recognizable and, and treatable with multiple options for treatment modalities that patients and families can pick from. So Dr. Hawkins, how do we balance the two most critical components between saying, look, this isn't a character flaw, but the person also isn't a victim? Because you don't want the, the patient, the client to come out and say, I'm a victim, I have no power, I'm completely hopeless. The way that I try to do that uh, in terms of teaching residents at our facility is that, it, that these are illnesses just like any other medical illness. The analogy I make, if someone's in a car accident and they are disabled, either they become paralyzed or they have some chronic condition or injury, they have to go to physical rehab, right? They can't just sit back and say, I've been a victim in a car accident, I'm not going to participate in physical therapy. It's the same thing with substance abuse and, and psychological disorders. 
once you have the diagnosis, it is incumbent upon you to take responsibility to be an active participant in the treatment. So you accept that this is the problem that I have, but you don't use it as a crutch or an excuse, and you say, I am going to take the appropriate action to get my power back. And I think that's the critical part of where the psychotherapy comes in, and the multi-modalities of psychotherapy. Um, acknowledging the anger, acknowledging the, 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 the stages of grief that one goes through when they receive a diagnosis, but at the same time you have to encourage them to, as they get through that, that there's going to be a time that they have to accept what is going on and then engage in a treatment plan. So what's the most significant message you'd want to give to someone who is potentially one of your patients or clients? Uh, not to give up, um, and I know that sounds very kind of canned and generic, but it, it, the road to recovery many times can be difficult. Um, and I, I find it's really important for all treatment providers to make sure that they are uh, persistent and hanging in there with, with patients. All of us who've treated folks with uh, substance abuse disorders and, and mental health disorders know that relapse and recurrence is common. How do you convince someone that there is hope, don't give up? Well, you know, part of it is, is, is in being there for them as a consistent provider as a part of the treatment team. So even if they're rejecting, you're continuing to reach out and, and be there. Um, but the other, I think the other component is to make sure um, that we have opportunities to involve people who've graduated, people who've been through things before, that we get them involved in groups with other people who've lived through similar experiences, have been through the trials and tribulations of recovery, both from a substance abuse standpoint as well as a mental health standpoint, and show that it can happen, it can be done. So what you're talking about when you say that there is hope, it's based on the action of the practitioner, the, the clinician, the expert, and other people around them. So Absolutely. it's creating a support center, Absolutely. a network of hope. Absolutely, it's both, both at the micro level and the macro level. Dr. Hawkins, you have a wonderful aura about you that, that is full of sort of hope and optimism and excitement. Um, I also get the sense that you're very playful. What are you grateful for? Um, professionally, uh, the Lindner family uh, had really done something incredibly wonderful in terms of the amount of uh, uh, financial and personal commitment to the development of the Lindner Center. As a professional, it is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to work in a facility like the Linner Center. Uh, and uh, every day I am grateful and very excited to be able to work there. Dr. Hawkins, it's been a real pleasure. I thank you for the, the huge heart and the way that you're helping people throughout the industry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.